So the word of God says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. What does this mean? We see this from the book of Genesis as well as from the gospel of John. And in today's video, I'm going to start with you a new episode of the gospel of John. So are you all ready? Let's get started. Hey you all and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ragini and I do upload faith-based videos twice a week. If you're one of those who loves hearing the word of God and enjoys listening to the Bible studies and everything that's related to faith-based, please do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to this channel. That way you're helping this channel to grow and reach out to people who are in need of the truth, which will set them free, which is about Christ, which is about the Bible, which is about our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we're talking about John the Baptist and I'll start with the context and um, I'll start with the description because we always need to know the context and the information why this gospel was written to whom it was written and what was the specific purpose of the writing and then in the other gospels the miracles are normally used to reveal Jesus's power in John the miracles are usually teaching signs and a message follows each one John's purpose is unique and consequently so is his interpretation of the life of our Lord and our Savior Jesus. So the purpose over here we see is Jesus' life. The people who believed in Jesus, the disciples, the signs and John's purpose is clearly evangelistic that his readers may believe. Thus, he records the confrontations of Jesus and Nicodemus. That's a very beautiful relationship between Jesus and Nicodemus. Conversation is also very important. And on a side note, if you're one of those who loves Chosen or who have watched Chosen, that's also pictured or filmed very beautiful. So you can understand that um, easier how the conversation went between our Lord and Nicodemus. So if you have your Bibles, please open the Gospel of John or the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 to 13. So normally what I do is I read the scriptures first and then we dig deep into the context which is written down here with the keynotes and the characters explaining it in depth. So if you're wondering what Bible I'm using, I'm using King James Version, a study Bible by Thomas Nelson. I do have a whole different video explaining what type of Bible I use and how it helps in my daily walk. So make sure to check that. I'll put it somewhere up here or down in the description below. So make sure to check that out. The title is the Word of God. The meaning of word in Greek is logos, L-O-G-O-S, logos. Over here it says in chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What is the beginning? Before we were formed, before the plants and the animals and the seas and the oceans, before anything was formed, there was Word. The entire universe was created by the Word of God because God said, Let there be light. And we can read that from the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. Genesis, right? The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. We're talking about John the Baptist and we're reading currently his gospel. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might be saved. He was not that light. John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. We're talking about Jesus. John was bearing the witness of the son of man who is Christ, who is the light of the world, who is the savior of the world. Verse 9 says that, that was the true light which lighteth every man and cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name 
which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God now we see over here John is um, writing that in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God what is this word it's the Holy Bible the scriptures Sometimes people might say that Bible is just another book written by a man. How are we supposed to trust and believe in it? But remember, it was written by men, these disciples, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. These people, these disciples, they walked with God. They talked with God. They experienced God. They went through different situations and how God worked in their life. So the question over here is, would we rather believe in the man-made religious doctrines created by the leaders and politicians and religious group re, group people or should we follow the word of God which is inspired by the Holy Spirit and which was written and inspired by people who experienced God, who spoke to God, who walked with God, Christ. Amen. Choice is always ours to be disobedient to the word of God and say that, oh, I don't believe in that. That's old stuff. Who knows how it was written, what it was written or to believe in the word of God. We're not talking about spiritualizing scriptures or idolizing scriptures or using them for your own pleasures or feelings or benefits. We're talking about Christ. We're talking about the son of God who was sent by God to die on the cross for our sins and who resurrected and that's the victorious good news for all of us that there is a God who died on the cross for our sins and who also resurrected. That's the evidence. That's the good news. Of Christianity amen so we see over here the introduction to John occurs in two cycles of three points each the message the messenger and the hearers the key idea is the word or Greek word logos in the Old Testament creation was by the Word of God and God said let there be light we see that from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 5 the scriptures are also called the word of God. We also see that from the New Testament, from the book of Acts, chapter eight, verse fourteen. And I'm gonna, uh, and I'm gonna link down all these Bible verses in the description, as well as I will share over here somewhere on the side the pictures of the verses so you can read them. In the beginning, the word was with God. Signifies the perfect fellowship between God the Father and God the Son in eternity the word was god just as the previous expression the word was with god emphasizes dis distinction in the godhead this phrase stresses the essential unity in greek text of this verse god is a predicate adjective appearing without article and preceding the word thus emphasizing jesus divinity john could not have expressed the full divinity of christ more completely life light see also 8 and 12 9 and 5 in John's writings life represents salvation and deliverance through Christ and light denotes Jesus Reve Jesus's revelation of God which calls men to accountability there is there's a huge significance of light in the in Christianity or in biblical views because the light is God himself and when you are experiencing the light of God through your dreams or visions, which by the way, I do also have my testimony over here where I am sharing with people, with you all about how I was saved a few years ago with a dream I had of the bright light. And I have also watched so many other testimonies and videos about the visions and dreams of people talking about that light, which gives you peace. So the light of the world is our Lord and our Savior Jesus. And over here it says the meaning of light. In John's writing, life represents salvation and deliverance through Christ. And light denotes Jesus' revelation of God, which calls men to accountability. It's the revelation of Christ to us. That's why the word of God or the scriptures talks about the light all the time that once you were in darkness, but now you're in the light. So that's the revelation of our God, our Savior, Jesus. God's revelation is universally available, universally available. It does not signify universal salvation. 
knew the world did not acknowledge or recognize him as the true light. And we see that today as well. Because the God of this world, the small letter God is devil, has blinded the minds of people who do not believe. 